How are you, Sarah? Good <laughs> yes, good evening. Yes, it's actually 11 there, the a.m., I think. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's a beautiful day for the yes. first time in a while. It has been so rainy and gross here. Um, and today, the sun is out, and there's, I mean, there are no clouds. It is so nice. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so how's your crisis there, the pandemic, the COVID? Is it, is it worse? It is. Uh, the pandemic here in, in Richmond is, it's rough. Um, mm. Our case count is climbing. Um, they've not been able to slow it here. So the city uh, itself is still closed. Um, but my county, uh, like my larger county, is like in phase one of reopening. So things are starting to come open a bit, um, but we really haven't left the house. Okay. How about yourself? <laughs> here, you know, it, the, the situation actually is getting worse. I hope that we are going to get the hang of it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, same here. I hope people figure it out. I've, I've got lots of masks, you know, for if we needed to go to the store or something, but we've been paying people to do that for us, <laughs> which has been great. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So anyway, today or tonight here in the Philippines, uh, we're going to have our bulk talk here. Yes, this is going to be an interview with well acclaimed author, my favorite author. <laughs> it's a I'm, I'm so excited. <laughs> let me know when you want me to hit record, okay? Yeah, sure. I've got the button up here, but you let me know when you're ready and then I'll, I'll hit it, okay? Okay, yes. I am now cool. very much ready. <laughs> okay, so are you ready for our book talk? Absolutely. Okay, so let's get it started. All right. Yes. Yes. Okay. So today I have actually some questions to ask regarding your book and of course some personal questions. And yeah, for the information of everybody I am interviewing today, Sarah Glenn Marsh, the author of one of my favorite books. Or duology. This one is Reign of the Fallen and Song of the Dead. Yes. Now, to start our conversation or our interview, my first question here is this. What inspired you to write Reign of the Fallen? All right. So my inspiration behind Reign um, was actually uh, probably the most personal inspiration of any book I've written. So uh, back in, gosh, I think it was 2015, um, my grandmother was very sick. Um, she helped raise me, so we are extremely close. Um, she was in the hospital, and she was bleeding internally, and they couldn't figure out why. Um, so we thought she was going to die. Um, she didn't. <laughs> um, thank goodness. Uh, she was okay from this incident, but it was so serious that it, it got me thinking about grief and loss, which was something I had never really dealt with before um, in my personal life. And how far someone would go to bring a loved one back from the dead. Um, I guess because oftentimes, you know, grieving people will say things like, I would do anything to have my loved one back. And I, I felt the same way. And I thought, you know, just being a writer and having a big imagination, I was like, what if that were? possible. You know, what What would the consequences of that be? Um, and I realized there was a story idea there. I thought about this world where the dead could return and have a second life among the living um, and what like. problems might arise. And that, that's, that's really where the idea of the rain came from. Mm -hmm. That's a unique idea. This is my first time actually to get you know, across me that type, that concept where the dead actually reigns. Yeah. I still love it. I still love the idea. Oh, and uh, yeah, that's actually, you know, something that, uh, that really awestruck me. Yeah. Now, can we proceed to the next question, Sarah? Okay. Okay. Now, regarding the, you know, your writing on Reign of the Fallen Duology, how much time did you spend to finish the books? That's a great question. So um, I'm going to include planning time because for me with my writing process, planning time is everything. So um, from the time I had that idea, which I just kind of described, um, I would say I spent uh, maybe five to six months 
um, building the world um, and planning everything. I'm not, at the time, I was not a big plotter. So it wasn't like I was sitting and writing out the whole plot, but it was more about like studying how different cultures and religions around the world view death and like what their their rituals and ceremonies about death are and b building my world. Um, so that took several months. Uh, and then when I finally sat down to write Rain, I think it took me about two months to draft. Oh. It was fast. Yeah. It's really fast. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I so love the world building. Yeah, the cars, yeah, and the, some other places mentioned in Rain of the Fallen. Yes. In fact, uh, in my specific blog, which I already have published in Goodreads, one of the strengths of Rain of the Fallen is actually the world building. Uh, you can actually imagine the world very clearly. Yes, it, the description is very vivid. I still love it. Okay, now for the next question, what were the challenges you had along the process of making this novel? Well, were there challenges? You know, I will say like with, with Rain, um, it was a unique time for me. Um, I was in the process of letting my first agent go. Uh, so we're going to get into the business side of things a bit, but I, I wanted to change with my career. So I had just parted ways with my agent and I felt very free, but that in itself was a challenge. I also felt like I didn't have as much support. Um, but with Rain, I, I wrote it just for myself. And so I really didn't have a lot of challenges where the challenges came in uh, was with Song of the Dead. Mm, what happened yeah. with Song my editor uh, for book one for Rain, she left. Mm. She left. Like she left Razorbill. And so, and I loved her. We had a really tight relationship. Um, we would call each other just to talk. Uh, we were pals. And so it was really hard to lose her because we shared a vision for the series. Um, and that threw me for a curveball. My, my new editor who stepped in was wonderful, but the, it was definitely a challenge to get to know someone new uh, and to start working with someone who had a different style and a different vision, you know, midway through the series. So I would say that was a challenge. And the other challenge was Song of the Dead was the first book I ever wrote under contract. And so they wanted me to outline it really heavily um, before I wrote it. And I was like, Guys, I don't really do that. That's not me. Um, and so I had to come up with a system to outline um, and learn how to do that. And I would say that's helped my writing overall. But it was hard um, at the time. Uh, and also just like trying to make sure that I got all the details from book one, right? So like when I was writing song, I would I would sit there with um so I had, you know, song is like up on my computer and then rain was right next to me, like at my, like <laughs> directly at my side. And as I would write, I would like flip through different scenes to make sure I had all the details right. And I didn't like change someone's eye color or something. Oh, that's a really you know, very difficult challenge on your end. <laughs> <laughs> it was interesting. You have actually come up with a masterpiece. <laughs> okay, now here's the next question, and this is, yeah, this is about the character you can easily, you can actually relate with. Which character you can relate the most with? I'm referring to the rain or song. Okay, um, so the answer that, you know, would immediately come to mind for me as a whole would be Simeon, uh, who is Odessa's, um, you know, sort of adopted brother. Uh, and the reason I would say Simeon is because Simeon deals with everything through music and humor. And that's me. Um, I cope with all my feelings through music. And when there's like a bad or dark situation, I'm the first person to make a joke about like throwing myself off a cliff. Like nothing's off limits for me. I have a dark sense of humor and I will joke at any time. Like I will say something to just try to defuse the situation. But interestingly, like in the last year, um, I would say I actually relate more to Odessa now. Um, Odessa. It was, yeah, because like I, I wrote book one as a person who hadn't really experienced deep loss. But then after, after finishing the series, I lost uh, five people <laughs> who mm -hmm. I was extremely close with. Um, my grandmother did pass away and I went through hospice with her. Um, so getting her into hospice care 
and I was there pretty much until the end, and it was awful. And um, having written Odessa, um, I was more familiar with grief, and having written her journey sort of allowed me to be kinder and more understanding with myself during the grieving process, and that was really a gift. So I would say Odessa mm -hmm. now. Yeah. Odessa, one of the most favorite characters. <laughs> <laughs> and I so love Valoria. The characters of yeah, Valoria, she's so idealistic. I love her mm -hmm. too. <laughs> yeah. I so love her, especially in song. song the I would be friends with her. <laughs> <laughs> How I wish Valoria is a true character. Yeah. yeah. In, yeah. Just in the real world. <laughs> now, the next question is something personal. Okay. What, yeah, what books change your life? Awesome. Okay, well... The first one is going to be from when I was little, um, I, like 10 years old. Um, when I was around 10, my dad uh, gave me a copy of The Hobbit. He had taken it from a beach house, and it was the nastiest looking book you have ever seen. Because So this copy, the cover was ripped off, so it had no cover. The pages were yellow, and it smelled like the ocean it smelled like brine it was stinky mm -hmm. and yellow and awful and he was like you need to read this and I was like dad no <laughs> um but when I finally did it changed my world and opened up my worldview because I it was the book that showed me that like as an author as someone who enjoyed stories that I could make up my own world that I could take people to that I had the ability just through words to transport people somewhere that they could never physically go in their life. Um, and so The Hobbit changed my whole world that way. Um, I would say a later book for me as an adult that um, was really groundbreaking was The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. I recommend this book all the time because it. Uh, just really affected me. I love it. It's extremely diverse in the most beautiful way and so casually queer that it is mind-blowing. It's lovely. Um, so those are my two. Yeah, that's a great book, really. Okay, I, I thought otherwise it's Harry Potter, <laughs> which is very <laughs> fun, you know, among authors. Okay, this is another personal question. What is your favorite genre? Oh, book genre. So my favorite genre is, uh, shockingly, not fantasy, although I do love it. Let me be clear. I love fantasy and I love sci-fi, um, but my favorite genre is actually horror. I really like the idea of uh, looking into the dark and something looking back at you. I actually find it comforting. And I, uh, I think there's a measure of comfort in seeing the worst that people can endure um, in horror and come out on the other side. Uh, like during the pandemic and everything that's going on with these, you know, police doing terrible racist murders here in, in America, um, it's been an escape to read horror books where, you know, the monsters are horrible, but they're overcome in 300 to 400 pages. Um, there's, there's an escapism in that. Um, it can be frightening too, but there's also something freeing about it. Okay. Now for the next question. Hmm. This is really a very interesting question, and I'd like to know the answer right now. Uh, do you have a plan to write a sequel to Rain? I'm so excited. <laughs> Rain and Tom? Um, so no, I wish. Uh, there's no third book currently planned, so there's just Rain and then Song. Um, but I'm totally open to it. I love the world. I love the characters. Tell Ping when you want it, because I'm, I'm here. I'm alive. I have a keyboard. I have word, I want to write more, like, I love that world, and I think, uh, you know, in song, it opened up the world with everybody's eye color and the different powers, and I think there are so many different things that could still be explored, so many, um, you know, not just with Odessa, but with different heroes, even, I think there's more room to explore, like, a lot of stories, I'm, I'm open to it, um, there is a short prequel story, I don't know if you've read that, there's a um, prequel that is about uh, Odessa and her friends, like the necromancer friends in their early lives, and that is in the back of the Song of the Dead paperback. It's called Rise of the Sparrow. Is that limit in limited copy, the prequel? I, I haven't heard that. No, it's, um, so I wonder if it's not in the back of the international edition. It's, it's in um, the back of the paperback that released in January. Oh, yeah. I see. 
So it's in the back of Song of the Dead. Said to read that one, that prequel. <laughs> well, I'll be if, you, if you can't find it, I will send you a copy. I'll figure it out. I, I don't know if I can right now with the COVID, but we'll we'll figure it out because um, I would love for you to read it. Okay. We'll work yeah. on it. Email me. Yeah. Um, we'll read that one. Probably one of these days. <laughs> now, here's the next question. Which do you like more between the two? Is it Rain of the Fallen or Song of the Dead? Which do you prefer? Okay, well, I mean, so there's this really special place in my heart for Rain because, like I said, it definitely allowed me to hold so much space and kindness for myself uh, during my own grieving process, which was incredibly difficult. Um, but I'm going to say Song of the Dead. <laughs> And the reason I'm going to say song is I loved the freedom of the sequel. Um, I got to expand Odessa's world like any way I wanted. I got to see what was outside cardio with her for the first time. And it was so freeing. And I love travel myself. So um, the boat adventure part was really fun for me. I'm a big traveler. Uh, and I loved getting to know the characters on a deeper level as I explored a new story with them. And I, I got to connect with them more. So Seems true here. I so love uh, Song of the Dead because of, you know, the complex characters there. There are more added characters. Yeah. I love and more the characters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So this is going to be the last question. All right. What's your message to our avid readers or to your avid readers and to aspiring writers like me? I so love to write one day. <laughs> All right. I'm going to break that down. It is a great question. Thank you. I'm going to break it into two parts. So for just to avid readers, what I would say is thank you um, and keep reading because it's the best way to live so many lives outside of your own um, and in doing so to build much needed empathy and understanding. Um, readers make the world a better place by being in it. So again, I agree. Um, to aspiring writers. Now, <laughs> there's a lot I could say, so <laughs> I'm going to try to keep it simple and like give a couple of pieces of like big advice. Um, so three things, we'll say three things. Um, read heavily, uh, not just in the genre that you love to write, but across all genres, because it'll show you new things about yourself and your own writing, it'll teach you. Um, and the second thing I would say is be open to critique. When you start writing and you have something to share, be open to critique and seek it out, but also offer to critique work for others. That is how I learned to write professionally without going to school for it or, or having any sort of training. I critiqued work across all sorts of genres that I wouldn't normally seek out. Like, um, I don't read women's fiction, but I critiqued women's fiction. Uh, what that'll do is it'll teach you so much more about how to edit your own work and what you like in a story than like any editor could possibly teach you. Uh, critiquing for others is super important. It'll really enrich your writing and make you a better editor. Um, and then the last thing I would say is remember why you love to write. Uh, because there are going to be days when it's hard or when, if you're trying to get published, um, when rejections will have you down. Um, and that's when it's important to write something that's just for you. Um, successes are great. Success is really exciting. But it won't negate any um, negative self-dialogue that you already have in your head. Um, it doesn't silence that the way that you think it will, because um, you'll be just chasing the next goal. Um, and so I would say, as you write and as you seek out publication, just hold on to why you love to write. Hold on to the personal aspect of it, and that will keep you motivated and keep you going through the tough times. Thank you so much. That's really a wonderful and inspiring message. No, Mom. <laughs> yes, I'm going to apply that <laughs> in my, you know, <laughs> endeavor. <laughs> well, thank, thank you so, so much, much for, for all this. This has been great. <laughs> yes, yeah, I'm really over the moon right now, you know, to talk with one of my favorite authors. <laughs> so hey, I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled too. I'm so glad to be here. I'm glad we could take the time to do this. <laughs> mm. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to, you know, publish this uh, conversation of ours in several sites so I can actually promote your book. I so love, I'm going to really, you know, show to the world how wonderful your work is. Oh, Amazing. Well, thank you. Thank you so much.